Okay, myth one. But where do you get your fill in the nutrient? So, you know, what, what nutrients are you always hearing about that, you're, that people are concerned about? Protein, number one protein, iron, calcium, now they're omega-3s. So we're gonna talk about all of that. I love this cartoon because I share this cartoon a lot because you know, basically people are eating the standard American diet, you know, sitting there at McDonald's eating a burger and fries and maybe a Diet Coke, like many of us used to do, and thinking, oh my gosh, that vegan, where is she getting her nutrients? And there's this really misperception of the idea that if you're on a vegan diet, you need to plan more carefully than if you were not on a vegan diet. Every diet needs to be well thought out if you're going to, you know, get all of your nutrients. But I'm here to say with great confidence after all of these 20 plus years in this industry, you can get all of your nutrients from plants. Safer, safer vitamin B12, but we will go into detail about that. But it is very possible, and that's only because of society. We talked about that last night. But if you eat a wide variety of vegetables, fruits, whole grains, legumes, nuts, seeds, herbs, and spices, you will get everything you need in wonderful proportion and in wonderful packaging. So that Academy of Nutrition and Dietetics, who is not only sponsored by the Dairy Council, and if you go to one of their meetings, which I've only gone once and I can't go again, you have booths from every food industry, Coca-Cola, um, McDonald's, everyone trying to just gather the troops and tell you how you know, you can make this healthy. I remember McDonald's trying to recruit me when I was walking through that thing. I was like, are you kidding me? Well, I don't know. Can I change everything about your menu? But that Academy of Nutrition and Dietetics, which has these sponsors, has in their position paper, this is from 2009, the updated one is coming soon, but they state that an appropriately planned vegetarian diet, including total vegetarian or vegan diets, are healthful, nutritionally adequate, and may provide health benefits in the prevention and treatment of certain diseases. Well-planned vegetarian diets are appropriate for individuals during all stages of the life cycle, including pregnancy, lactation, infancy, childhood, adolescence, and for athletes, one of my favorite populations. I love the athletic population because working with illness is really important and you see getting people getting better, but taking someone at optimal health and seeing how you could push them past that even to superior health after that with a plant-based diet is very exciting. It's all exciting in my opinion, but. There are studies to show that, that vegetarian diets can be nutritionally adequate. This study looked at they compared a, a meat-eating diet to a vegetarian diet, and they showed that the vegetarian diets actually had higher intakes of the crucial nutrients, fiber, vitamins A, C, E, thiamine, riboflavin, folate, calcium, iron, potassium, than non-vegetarians. Well, guess what? In the Dietary Guidelines Scientific Advisory Committee report, those were some of the key nutrients that the standard American diet was lacking, and the standard American population were lacking in these nutrients, but we can get those from plants. They also showed on the flip side of that, that you're not taking in stuff like saturated fat, dietary cholesterol, and other things that we know are consistent with disease promotion. They even stated that even with weight loss, so when you're cutting calories, you, every calorie matters more for nutritional density, and even with fewer calories or calorie restriction, it's still nutritionally optimal. And by the way, the little thing about weight loss is but the secret to weight loss is a plant-based diet because you could eat more food, I love food, I love to eat more food, for fewer calories and all nutrient dense. So this study looked at, they looked at those protective factors versus the pathogenic factors. And when you're eating plants, of course, you're getting this plethora, this beautiful natural plethora of phytochemicals like antioxidants that have amazing properties we'll talk to about in a minute, and fiber, and you're not getting the pathogenic factors. And there's a lot of them. This study compared five diets, so um, you know, going up in, in animal product intake from vegan, no animals, vegetarian, eggs and dairy, semi-vegetarian, I don't know how they, ca they always calculate it a certain way, but it, it varies depending on the study, a fish with a vegetarian, so fish and dairy and eggs, and omnivorous diet. And they looked at two healthy eating scores. One is called a Healthy Eating Index 2010, and the other one is a Mediterranean diet score. So it's a scoring system of how healthy the diet is. Well, they found that the vegan diet is the healthiest. I like to look at it as a spectrum because a lot of people come to me and say, I don't want to go vegan, will you work with me? And at first I was like, sure, I'll work with anyone. I want to help everyone. But then I started to realize that, you know, because the more plants you eat, the better you get, the more plants you want to eat and the less of the 
health damaging foods you want to eat. And that's where the result, it's like a dose dependent relationship. By the way, I have these graphics on my website, which is currently being updated. Um, so it's kind of the pictures are in and out, but I'm happy to send you any of my graphics, my pyramid, my plate. I think I've created them as tools that I, I want everyone to use because they've been helpful for me and my, my clients. This is my favorite way to look at nutrition. Nutrients. Now, this comes from Dr. T. Colin Campbell's A China Study, and he gratefully uh, gave me permission to reprint this in The Vegetarian Diet. And I just didn't want to reinvent the wheel because this was so brilliantly executed. He took 500 calories of plant foods, of a nice variety of plant foods. Actually, I'll tell you, they were tomatoes, spinach, lima beans, peas, and potatoes. And he compared that mi equal mixture to an equal mixture of 500 calories worth of beef, pork, chicken, and milk. And he stuck those in the nutrient processor, the calculator, and here's what it came out with. And it says it all, in my opinion, nutritionally speaking. Zero cholesterol in plants. You only get plants, I mean, you only get cholesterol from animal products. You get nine times the amount of fat in animals as compared to plants. But here's the kicker. Almost identical amounts of protein, 33 versus 34. So if everyone's so concerned about protein, all they need to do is look at this. Of course, and they'll be like, well, that's one gram of protein, but that's ridiculous. Uh, fiber, there's only fiber in plants, 31 grams as opposed to zero. And then you've got twice the amount of iron, and it's, it's non-heme iron in plants, which is optimal because it does, it's not oxidative like heme iron is, and twice the amount of calcium. So you can get everything better in plants. Here's another graphic I created as a handy guide. I have magnets of, of these, where it's just notable nutrient sources. So when people say, where do you get your protein? Where do you get your omega-3 fats? And here's just kind of a chart with all that information. It's on my website, plantbaseddietitian.com. But I have to save room for B12. B12 is somewhat controversial, but really the preponderance of data show that vegans that do not supplement tend to have a higher incidence of uh, vitamin B12 deficiency. The problem with this is it doesn't show up in your lab work until pause, possibly it's too late, and you could end up with irreversible neurological damage if you're not supplementing B12. Now the argument about this is, oh, well then it's not natural. A vegan diet can't be natural if you need to supplement. So my answer to that is it is natural. It is found in the microorganisms in the soil, and unless you don't sterilize your food like most of us do, I, liked, I don't like eating gritty what we were talking about last night, carrots. I don't like you know, soil in my food. So we sterilize it, we clean everything very well. I don't, my garden doesn't grow because we have a big drought in California. Some people have figured it out, I haven't. Uh, so you know, so it is natural, but the animals consume it. That's how it ends up in animals. And we're seeing B12 deficiency in all sorts of populations. As we age, we decrease our production of uh, intrinsic factor, which helps the absorption of B12. And so a lot of people, as we age, are less able to absorb B12. People with gastrointestinal issues. It is not an exclusively vegan issue, but it is necessary. And I, I go with uh, Jack Norris. He stratified everything based on this certain calculation. And I follow him and Dr. Michael Greger's recommendations of 2,500 micrograms a week from cyanocobalamin and that you could do it any way you want because it's a safe, easy, effective, it's water soluble, it goes in, what you don't need goes out. Uh, so you could do 1,000 micrograms three times a week or two to three times a week. You could do a 500 microgram uh, every day, but they're very easily absorbed and very easily utilized. And it's like an insurance policy, very cheap and I highly recommend it if you're vegan.